Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another Firestarters in the Morning. I'm Brother CJ. Hey, hey, yes, and this is Ron, and what a great day this is that the Lord has made. We're all hooked up here for another Fire Starters in the Morning, and we are so thankful because we know that the fire of God through the power of the Holy Spirit is going out into the lives of our listeners, and we're so thankful um, that we are running towards revival each time. Every time we come on Fire Starters, I start wondering what the Lord is going to do in somebody's life today, praise God, because we know that when the Word of God goes out, it's out, sent out to perform things, and it's going to perform something in your life today and not return void back to the Father. So as we do this, we know that we're crossing over today into the promises of our God, praise God, and we are even more excited today because we have our dear brother David Rogers with us, and I would love to be able to announce all about David Rogers, but I think I'm going to let him do that because... <laughs> I, I, good I, idea, Ron. Good good idea. Idea. Yeah, I think it's a great idea, good idea. because I, I own a few hats, but I think Dave must have a shelf full of hats, so I'm going to let him explain that to you. And Welcome, brother. Welcome, brother it's David. God bless, you. Yeah, God bless you. Yeah, we Thanks love you, brother. Me, Ron, I love you, too. Yeah, amen. Uh, I see you often at the uh, Madeira County... County Board of Supervisors uh, delivering a prayer. Yeah. That's one of the hats that I wear. I, uh, I'm a Madera County Supervisor for District 2. And in that uh, auspice, I also serve on 24 different commissions, uh, some of which take a lot of time. Uh, in addition to that, I'm a business operator. I own, I've owned and operated David Rogers Construction for the last 30 years. And... Um, other than that, I'm a father of three beautiful sons and and uh, grandfather to three little little uh, kids and a husband to my wife of 36 years. Wow, last praise week. God, yeah. In fact, uh, just last week we celebrated our 36th wedding anniversary. Oh, nice. happy anniversary. Late, belated. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, it's, uh, you know, I'm a busy, I have a busy life and I'm grateful for all the opportunities. I look at it as opportunities. All the opportunities that God's given me to serve my community and, and be a part of the community. I used to be, uh, uh, when I was in the city of Chowchilla, uh, I served there uh, back in the 90s as two-term mayor and council member for the city of Chowchilla. So it kind of moved on from there, and uh, I've been involved in politics for 14 years straight now. So. All right. All right. Yeah. You've been a blessing, I know, to Madera City and County, and uh, your service, um, man, is just commended because of the servant's heart that you have, and you serve in your local church. You, I've seen your, your your face in so many different places, and I've heard your name in so many different places that I can't even keep up with it, but but I thank God for you, and uh, uh, man, I hope to acquire that energy and that mindset for myself, because... Uh, uh, I know the Lord has plenty for us to do in the future. and uh, You know, it's, uh, that's another hat that I wear I should have mentioned as well. I, I serve in Grace Community Church as one of their worship leaders. In fact, Sunday I'll be on worship team with my wife and my, uh, uh, my middle son, who, who is an outstanding musician. We're all musicians. I play the piano. I played the piano for the last fifty years. Wow! We yeah. should have gotten we should have gotten the piano. Should have hooked really. the piano. Yeah, yeah we did a little <laughs> worship. I play both classical and uh, and worship music, and I play a little uh, contemporary. Whatever you want, mm -hmm. I can play a little bit of everything. Wow! So it's awesome. I enjoy that. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yes, yeah. You got a worshiper's heart. <laughs> yeah, I did. yeah. It's, it's a passion for me. I've been uh, leading worship, oh, <laughs> close to forty years. Wow. Wow, that is so amazing. Maybe a little over that, in yeah. fact, I think. Because yeah. I started when I was 16 leading worship in church. And um, uh, actually, they asked me to start teaching and directing music and, and doing stuff at the church camps every year. So I did three church camps a year in the summertime. And, uh, and then, of course, on Sunday, I would lead worship. So wow, I've wow. I've been doing that for a long time now. That is so powerful, you know, and I'm getting a picture of King David right now, and I'm thinking, you know, this guy, the things that he accomplished through his faith, right? Mm -hmm. And, of course, the anointing of God on his life and, sure. and all those things that we man all acquire, man, for God's own heart. And I, and, and I see the works that you do, 
And, and I'm looking at the same picture of King David, and I'm thinking, you know, because of his worship, he became who he became because of his worship. Yeah. And, and his faith grew because of his worship. And I see, you know, we talked earlier, you know, and you said 120 hours a week, and I'm thinking, how could anybody possibly go 120 hours? And you're smiling. <laughs> And you and you, you actually walked in here today. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. yeah, you know it is. A, it, it, life is uh, to be lived, and I see what you're saying. You know, David was a very passionate person. Mm -hmm. He was a man of great passion, uh, and that came through in what he did. He was not only a uh, musician, but he was a poet. He was a, a shepherd. He was a warrior. Uh, all of those. Uh, he was a leader. He was a king. And also, one other thing goes with that that was uh, uh, endemic of people of passion, and that was he was a great sinner, too. <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and, and, that, and you know what gives me heart about that is yes. that, yeah, you know, I, I, I lead my community. I am, uh, I'm a, a leader in my church. I know the Bible well. It guides every step of my life. Proverbs has a big influence. Oh, on my goodness, yes. Uh, but, you know, along with all that, I, I'm a scuba diver, I'm a mountain climber, wow. I'm, I, I do all those things that are passionate things for mm. me. We need to go mountain climbing, you and I. Yeah. I love mountain climbing. I, you know, I absolutely, it's, <laughs> a, it's great passion. I've done all the major climbs in Yosemite mm -hmm. uh, from uh, Half Dome all the way through to, to El yeah. Capitan. I've been on the face the nose of Bell You know, t to be honest, as far as the closest mountain climb I've ever, ever done was the, uh, was the wall that they have hooked up and all that. But, oh. Yeah, I've done that. Well, if you ever want to go, <laughs> you let me know and all I'll right. make it happen. I will, yeah. But, you know, in, with passion, and, you know, I, I write music, I, I play music, and the Spirit of God uh, comes upon me when I'm playing the piano in church, especially sometimes I don't, I won't even think about what I'm doing and, um, and maybe li listen to a recording later on. Somebody will say something about, wow, what was that you did on the piano? Yeah. And uh, it's just kind of like, I can just tell you that God works through us in our talents. That's right. Yeah. And sometimes we don't even know what we're doing, but he's doing it through us. That's right. It's God who worketh in you both the will and to do his good pleasure. That's right. And he That's gets right. pleasure out of a, of, of a man or a woman who gives their, their heart to him. And that passion for, for God flows through you right. and becomes something that more than you are. Mm -hmm. And you, you become bigger and better than you would be uh, without him. Well, I'm, I'm feeling you so much right now, you know, and, 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 and I just got the name Matthew. Matthew, this is what you're looking for, what, <laughs> what Brother Rogers here is, is talking about. Of course, his name is David, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so, of course, he understands the anointing, and he understands the faith and the authority that comes with that anointing. And Matthew, that's what you're, that you're the very thing he's talking about, Matthew, is what you're looking for. Yeah, you know. Use your talents. Worship the Lord. I don't know if you're already doing something musically. Um, I'm asking the Lord about you, but, but I know this for sure. I know that what you're hearing right now is inspiring you, and the Lord is calling you to be that worshiper, to be that leader for wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Praise God. So just obey the Lord in this. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I love to hear that because as a, as a musician, worshiper myself, man, this is just, I'm so connected with you in this right now. You, you know, the, the, uh, the neat part about being a child of God in, and, and finding forgiveness for our sins, uh, when we go back to David, again, a man of passion, great accomplishments and all that, and then, uh, of course, we know the Bible records his greatest sin, and uh, the, the moment he uh, looked upon Bathsheba and then, and then uh, went after her and uh, then had Uriah the Hittite had him murdered in order to, to cover up his own sin. Tried. That was her, that was her husband. <laughs> yeah, amen. And uh, he had him murdered. And God uh, revealed to him, look, you know, David, I know what you did. And David realized, yeah, wow. I know that I know that God knows what I did, yeah. but I've just not been thinking about that. Yeah, and um, so he was a great, <laughs> great sinner, and uh, and along with that sin came great repentance. Um, 
David wasn't the kind of guy that when he said, when somebody told him, you're wrong, he would say, he would go fire back and say, no, you're wrong. <laughs> you know, he wasn't that kind of guy. He, yeah. When um, Nathan the prophet came in and told him a story about a, a man who had stole a poor man's lamb, and uh, when he had great herds, and he, but he wanted that lamb, and he stole that poor man's lamb, and uh, had him killed to steal, steal that lamb yeah, away yeah, from him. Yeah. He became indignant. He was, show me the man, I'll, it, it'll cost him his life, you know. And um, Nathan said to him, you're the man. Yeah, You right. stole another man's wife. And God knows what you did. Wow. And David, instead of balking and saying, you know, hey, leave me alone or whatever, he said, you're right. And he got down on his knees. In fact, it says he, he tore his clothes and, and, and uh, became uh, so sorry for what he had done. And God isn't looking for us to to be perfect because he knows we're not going to be in this yeah. life. He wants us to conform to his image. That's right. Conform to Come him. on, tell the truth. Be not yeah. conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your yes. mind that you may prove what is that, that good mm -hmm. and acceptable and perfect will of God. And the only way you can do that, Paul said in the first verse, is what he tells us, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Right. Holy, that's 100%, right? W-H-O-L-L-Y, that's holy, 100%. And then also, holy, H-O-L-Y. Yeah, yeah, come on. And 100%, um, we dedicate our bodies a living sacrifice unto God, which is our, it's only reasonable. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because we are his ch children. That's right. He says, uh, we are... Uh, that by grace we've been saved through faith and that not of ourselves it's a gift of God not of works us any man should boast that's right that's but then right. he says we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus yes. unto good work come on preach which it God has wow. before ordained that we should walk in them that's right so you know uh, God wants us to conform to him the devil is working to make us conform to the world that's right and the difference, uh, what will make the difference in our lives? We will either be like the world or we'll be mm -hmm. like God. And what makes the difference is which one do we fill our lives with? That's right. It's, uh, it's kind of like what Paul said. He said, I see another law in my mind, warring against the law in my mind and my spirit and my body, um, bringing me into captivity. So he said... Uh, uh, so that which I want to do, I don't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that which I should do, I can't. Yeah. But uh, he said, uh, "Oh wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this this body of death, this fight that I'm going through?" Oh, I thank God man. through Jesus Christ our Lord. Wow. Yeah. And so Praise it's God. like uh, somebody's told a story about the, the Indian describing this thing in him. This Indian man, he was saved, and they asked him what it was like. And he said, it's like two dogs, yeah. one one dark and evil, and one uh, white and bright and good. Yeah. And he says, they fight all the time. And they ask him, well, which one wins? And he said, the one I feed the most. That's right. Absolutely. Wow. <laughs> so we can feed the spirit or we can feed the world. It's up to us whether we want to walk after the Spirit or after God, That's He right. gives us that free will. Right. Yeah, that, and uh, if we give over or back our free will and say, God, take control of me where I don't have control myself. That's, That's so right. funny that you, you're saying that right now. Um, I, uh, I went to um, visit uh, uh, Pastor Eddie Gallegos' church in Good News Ministries down on Howard Road. Mm -hmm. um, he's, he's been on the show before. Um, anyways, he was talking about... Uh, conceiving the word, letting the word, uh, you know, penetrate your soul. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what I got out of it, and it, it was the way he put it was so so awesome. Um, uh, my understanding is, if you, if you guys want to check it out too, I, I actually encourage you guys to check it out. The Good News Ministry on 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 the website, check it out and listen to the word. And this is exactly what David is talking about right now: mm -hmm. is letting the word just penetrate. Mm -hmm. in your soul just let conceive it just ingest it 
mm-hmm. you know, like like you said, you know, you, the one you feed the most, mm-hmm. and how could we how could we get fed the most by feeding ourselves on the word, chewing yeah. on the word, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, my mentor uh, Theo Valenzuela, he, he he tells he tells us this all the time, is that uh, if we chew on the word, chew and chew, keep chewing on the word. Uh, maybe if it's just even if it's just one scripture, mm-hmm. chew on that one scripture every day. Every day you get something different out of it. Mm-hmm. Maybe you can uh, read a certain scripture uh, eighty times, and then you finally get a revelation on that scripture mm-hmm. because something different comes out of it. Mm-hmm. You know, right. it's so awesome how the word works like that. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's so amazing. Well, it's through, through the course of life. When we, come, we, we we don't know all, always know how the scriptures are going to apply to situations in our life, and we'll read something and we'll think, "Oh, that's interesting," yeah. uh, but you know what? It's also practical. Right. And there's a time when you're going to be sitting there, or you're going to be doing something. You're going to be doing something, and that scripture is going to apply. It's going to come in to focus so quickly. <laughs> Because it's going to be necessary, and right. God's going to bring that back to your mind in way of remembrance, mm-hmm. because it's it applies to that situation. Absolutely. And um, I, I can't tell you how many times in politics that's happened to me. Wow! wow. I'll be sitting that there um, uh, listening to somebody, or ready to make a comment, or I'm in an interview, or whatever, and uh, that situation will happen to me. Right. And, uh, you know, I, in fact, I'll give you an example. I was sitting in Channel 30, and uh, they're doing an interview and, uh, for my congressional run uh, two years ago. Mm-hmm. And they asked me all kinds of questions. And I sit on some very important organizations like the San Joaquin Valley Water Infrastructure Authority, which right now we're, our big focus is Temperance Flat Dam. We're trying to get the dam built because we need water for our valley. Water yeah. is life. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So they asked me a lot of questions about that, and they asked me questions about uh, what I'm going to do on the roads and streets and this and that. So all these questions are important questions, but then they come down to a question that, that I didn't expect them to ask me. Um, and the question was, what do you think about this situation with transgenders using... Rest <laughs> and um, immediately my mind went to the scriptures. Praise God. Ooh. And, and, I, and I, I uh, addressed it from a spiritual standpoint. And I said, you know, this is a moral issue. Yeah. And I said, we, we've never had any problems with uh, as long as men use their restroom and women use theirs. And, it, you know, the Bible says that God created men, men and male and female. He created them. And I said, the one thing you can't change, they might say they've changed this person, but the one thing you cannot change are X and Y chromosomes. Yeah. And for a fact, Mm -hmm. that is a scientific uh, fact, but it's also a biblical fact. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) absolutely. And so when I finished (laughs) the answer, they were everybody in the room was shaking their head. Yeah, that's that's right. Yeah. And I and. uh, later on, my pastor called me and said, wow, that was a great answer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now I've got to confirm. <laughs> yeah, so, right. That's right. Know, that I'll came, remember that one. It <laughs> came straight from the yeah. Lord because yeah. I really wouldn't have known how to answer that question. I hadn't yeah. thought about the answer to the question yeah. other than I have strong feelings about it like we all do. Sure, yeah. sure. Well, it's very yeah. difficult to be not be offensive in certain things. Yes. And that's and what I was attempting not yeah, to do. Yeah, I can tell that. You it know, you got to be perfect. direct but yeah. not offensive. That's right. That yeah. was good. And yeah. so I just answered the question. And my, my personal faith is what brought the answer. Mm-hmm. My faith in, in, uh, mm-hmm. in my reading the scriptures mm-hmm. and knowing these things from the... Yeah. We search the scriptures to know things. Yes. That I, apply. You know, I... I, I often think about is the the transgender community the, the you know the lesbian gay bisexual you know uh, all all that I often think about it in the mixture of Christianity and all that mm-hmm. and it's been on my heart a lot more lately and what I've been thinking is you know I've been uh, playing roles in my head mm-hmm. to where if I I get asked questions by by a, a um, someone who's lesbian gay or you know transgender mm-hmm. and Situations like like that, I often think, you know, what would, 
what would the Holy Spirit do through me to mm -hmm. them? Mm -hmm. And uh, what I know is, is that, um, that there's, at a spiritual standpoint, as, uh, as I continued to pray, actually three days ago, literally three days ago, I prayed on this. And what I saw is that uh, there's going to be a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there was an uh, interview, I forgot who it was, uh, another politician, famous politician, uh, you know, he's, he has the same standpoints as us. He's against abortion. He's against, you know, tr transgender and stuff, right. uh, et cetera. And long story short, um, there was this uh, transgender supporter asking him, you know, challenging him on different questions. Mm -hmm. And the way he put it is that uh, real kind of interest to me um, made it seem really interesting is that, you know, Back then, uh, it was called uh, identity disorder. Now it's called identity euphoria or something like that. They changed the name of it. Now, it, it's, it's so funny that, uh, um, not, not funny, that's not the word I'm looking for. It's just, it's so, It's so exciting to see the changes that the Lord can do. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, I, have, a, I have a good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, he, 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 was, he, he was gay, but he got delivered from that. Yeah, and, okay. yeah, and it was so awesome. Now he's, you know, now he, he uh, graduated from Bible college. He, you know, he, uh, um, he's, he's, he's strong in the Word. Mm -hmm. um, you know he's he's got really amazing jobs and he's a really nice guy and he's got you know this he, he, I consider him one of my best friends. The Bible I got, you know, the, my favorite Bible, my study Bible, I got because he bought it for me. Oh, and wow, you know that's awesome. that, he's a really good friend and yeah, he's this and and it's actually my first Bible that I've had since I since I got saved. First Bible that I actually bought for myself. Other than that, I've been using you know. Sometimes that doesn't even do good because, you know, I like I like going to my Bible because there's footnotes in my Bible. It's a study Bible, you know. Right. And and what I, what I see is, you know, people getting delivered like him, they're mm -hmm. going to change the world. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of times the the enemy will have us uh, set to a point not not just you know being gay or maybe we're uh, having a specific sin such mm -hmm. as maybe. Um, uh, for an example, I, I give this example all the time, pornography. And I was addicted for X amount of years since I was seven years old. Up until two years ago, I started the ministry, boom, boom, there. Uh, you know, ministering over the Internet. Wow. You know, the Lord, the Lord changed my sin from, from the Internet to change it to my strength. Your ministry. To a ministry so yeah. I can help those <laughs> who are addicted. Thank you, Lord. That's, and all yeah, that. That's and, something and, only God yeah, can do. Yeah, and that's what I see that... Um, you know, uh, my my friend doing too. I can sure. see him doing that too. I, right. I'm not sure if he's doing that, but I see him doing it. I see people doing it. You know, it just it's it's a it's an awesome thing that uh, that the, uh, God just changes our sin and shifts and changes around to make it something better. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily happen all the time, but happens happens when it happens. It's a, it's a great thing. Well, that's the neat part about uh, what Paul said. If any man is in Christ, right. he is a new creation. Right. Absolutely. Old things are passed away. Behold, <laughs> all things awesome? have become new. Yeah. And when, when uh, a person, uh, you know, like, like myself, you know, I, I know that, uh, that I'm a sinner in the eyes of mm -hmm. God. Yeah. I know that I've, I've done sin in my life over and over again. Like yourselves, we, you know, you talked about your addictions. Yeah. And, uh, there's none of us That's right. that yeah. is righteous. Yeah. Not one of us. Absolutely. Uh, I yeah. don't. When I'm, I'm talking to people, I'm very careful to to see myself mm -hmm. as I really am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. I'm nobody great. I'm nobody perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely not perfect. Yeah. Um, the reason I've been married for 36 years is because my wife put up puts up with me. <laughs> that's right. I got one. <laughs> all sin. We've all come short of the glory of God. We've yeah. all uh, done things in our life that mm -hmm. we wish we hadn't done. Mm -hmm. And as a Christian, especially yeah. now, the difference between, you know, a person who's a child of yeah. God and a person who's not yeah. 
is that we don't want to sin anymore. Right. We don't. We don't like to commit sin. That's right. Even though we may commit sin, we yes. don't like to do yeah, that. We don't want to do it. Yeah. And we and we seek uh, that forgiveness yeah. and that change in our life. Mm-hmm. And um, but uh, boy, definitely, yeah. I can identify with what you're saying there. Yeah, and you know, I I have I have a strong. Uh, a strong feeling to confess something right now, something that you were mentioning about, you know, thinking that you're uh, not thinking that you're, you know, you're you're good you're at a good standing point. You know, right now, our, our Lord's dealing with me right now is the point to where, you know, um, getting to the point to where I'm thinking I know it all. <laughs> I know I don't know it all, but uh, well, the young yeah, yeah, to yeah be all. exactly. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and you know, I, I'm I'm working on that. And, hey, man. And sometimes, hey, sometimes I've been I have here, to catch that. myself. No, I, that's why I say that. <laughs> yeah, hey, man. I have I have to catch myself constantly saying, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pretend I know what that is. I, I said that to uh, a few people on Facebook recently. You know, I'm not going to pretend I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, right. I'll find out the answer. Uh, maybe, maybe like computer stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't go to school about right. that, but I know a lot about computer stuff, sure. you know. Well, you have a natural gift there. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. It is. I'm, yeah, I'm anointed in it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but, but the awesome thing is that the Lord, the Lord opens doors for education. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I plan on going to school starting next year about uh, going to a video school uh, or, or, you know, just uh, figure out how to become a producer because, you know, um, why not warm up my knowledge on, on how to uh, be more productive in fire starters. That's, that's what my goal is, is to, to help to, uh, with the fire. Absolutely. And by the fire, I mean the passion, the love. Christ, the, the 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 excitement that we have, you know. Right. Um, just just uh, a few months ago, I prayed real really hard um, about you know, Lord, just give me the fire, give me the excitement that Ron has, because if you have seen the show back then, I wasn't really much as exci- exciting. <laughs> I mean, not saying I'm an exciting person. I'm saying I don't feel exciting. You know, yeah. like uh, everything's all that. But n- nowadays, it's like everything's everything's a lot different. It's like I got the joy upon my Lord, um, joy upon my heart, you know, uh, be- from the Lord. Um, uh, long story short, I, I I was in a season of depression, and then uh, um, actually I confessed that to Ron. We prayed. Long story short, got released and breakthrough from uh, breakthrough from. Thank you, Jesus. You know. All gone, that, uh, and then since then I've had a constant joy over my life because I allowed the Lord to work through my life. And uh, lately, lately I've been I've been singing, uh, singing in the streets, not really caring about what people think if I'm crazy or not. You, you know, that's yeah, that's yeah, that's what I want. I want to I want to sing. I want to dance out in the streets, and not worry about what people think about me. You know. And I'm at that point, so where I'm working on that, I want to come out of my shell, get excitement. You know, I have, I've been, I've been holding in so much excitement in my, in my heart, in my, in my body during praise and worship or something like that, because I'm afraid I might make a fool of myself. But see, the Lord's working. I know if I continue to uh, press in, I'm gonna break through those chains, and I'm gonna get to the point to where. I, I am comfortable finally to to actually do what I'm doing. Not saying I don't resist the rejoice in my life. I don't resist the joy, but I I want to do more. Mm-hmm. And that's that's what I feel that we should all have. Is we want to have more. And that's another thing what Pastor Eddie was was talking about last night is we need more, even though even though we feel that we don't need more. We always need more, always need more, or else, you know, even even the strong, hardcore Christians that are doing very well, they need more. Mm-hmm. They need more. Well, you know what you were talking about, um, being in worship and sometimes feeling inhibited, mm-hmm. and um, that isn't, that isn't uh, God talking to us. That's, Satan doesn't right. want us to worship God uh-huh. in our lives, and uh, human nature, we want to... We want to suppress what we think is not uh, normal. We want we want to blend in with the crowd right. and be be like everybody else. We don't want to be the oddball. But uh, going back to Psalmist David, okay. King David, 
as king of Israel, he uh, actually uh, donned a linen ephod and danced through the st streets before mm -hmm. the Lord when the Ark of the Covenant was returned to Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, and he danced before the Lord for joy. And he did it. He humbled himself as, as the king mm -hmm. and, and did this. Yeah. And it wasn't something that was ordinary. Yeah. It was extraordinary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it put him in a different uh, category as far as uh, expressing himself. Right. This man was a passionate man. Yes, he was. <laughs> he wanted to let his passion go for God and, and let people know. Yeah. Hey, I am so happy that God restored this Ark of the Covenant That's to right. Israel that I'm going to I'm going to step down as king for a minute. I'm going to get on regular uh, old clothes yeah. here and I'm just going to give it all to God. That's right. And and um, he danced before the Lord, the Bible says. Yeah. Now that his wife uh, despised him for it. She said, "You're the king of Israel. What are you doing?" Mhm. Mm here you humble yourself. You make an idiot out yeah. of yourself yeah. before, the, before, before the people. Yeah, you're supposed to be pompous. That's not, <laughs> that's not the, the way a king is supposed to act. That's right. But you know what? It's the way God's man is supposed to act. That's yeah. right. It's the way God's king is supposed to that's act. That's right. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, you know, I, I, I'm thankful that people know enough about me to know who I am in this sense. That wherever I go, uh, spontaneously, I will be asked to be do the invocation mm -hmm. over and over and That's over right. again. That's right. And I don't, I, I love that because uh, something, there, there's either something in me that people see that they know I'm willing to do that and I'm willing to give that to God, but I, I'm, I have the opportunity to lead people before the throne of grace, before God, or, and to recognize God's lordship over our lives. And uh, that is a real opportunity to dance before the Lord in yes, words. come on. And in, in my heart and in my mind. And I always try to use scripture, you know. I always uh, uh, pray a little, preach a little. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. That's right. You know how that is, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's when you have that opportunity, God opens doors. He'll give you opportunities. He definitely does. He and, definitely uh, does. Not because we're better than anybody else, but because we're available yeah. and because we're willing to we're sacrifice. Willing. Absolutely. We're willing to humble Absolutely. ourselves. Absolutely. Humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord. He will lift you up. Yeah. That's right. Uh, but those that exalt themselves will be brought down low. That's right. right. If you do it on your own, you, that's right. You, it's all about exalting him in our life. You, you were talking so. about David dancing in the streets. You know, that's that's what we all need. But I'll mm -hmm. tell you something. I'll confess something. That's what I want. <laughs> that, that, that's the kind of joy I want upon my life. I want to dance like David danced. I want to sing like da David sung. You know, You've heard, you, have you guys heard that song before? I want to sing like David. Mm -hmm. you know, the Spirit of the Lord is <laughs> that's, in my heart. That's, that's when, right. you, when you mentioned David dancing, mm -hmm. that's the song came in my heart. It's wow. like, you know, it's just, you know, I, yeah, that's, that's one of my favorite songs, actually, to actually worship to. And it's just, it's that, the, every time I hear that song, it's like, I want to run across the room all yeah. the way, do laps and laps, and <laughs> constantly and just well, keep the going for it. Think about all that. Your desire, this wonderful desire, and the desire to do that is not for ourselves, mm -hmm. but for uh, to sacrifice to the one we love, right. mm -hmm. to the God mm -hmm. we love. Um, not only this, but when we when we're willing to lay down our person uh, to escape our own being, as it were, our, our, this weak uh, veil of flesh, this tabernacle that's just temporary here on earth. And we're, we, uh, we escape that for a moment in time when we, when we give it all up to God and we just, like David did, dance in the streets or, or even fall down before the Lord prostrate, prostrate in the, in, in the uh, altar before him. And sometimes that's in our own quiet closet, as it were. Right? Sure, sure. I remember one time I was going through some serious stuff in my life. Really, really serious stuff. And I had a, a wife and uh, three little kids. And I was going to school full-time and working full-time. 
Now, how can you do full-time work and full-time right. school? I mean, I had no more full-times left. I was going to say, Full-time yeah. father, <laughs> husband, school, <laughs> church, and, and uh, working, too, full-time. Yeah. And uh, that stacks up in your life. It stacks some stuff up in your life, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And God made us so that we have to take our time right. with him. And we have to renew ourselves. You can't renew yourself in the, in the way of, of uh, remembrance and, and renew our minds unless you take the time to do that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember one night I, wa I walked into, we had a, an empty room in the house. And the boys, they didn't like to sleep alone, so we had all three of them in one room. And we had an empty room in the house. And I went into that room, which I had kind of used for a, a study, and I was doing some drafting. In fact, I was, uh, I was designing a church in, Fre in Fresno that ended up being built. I did all the drafting for that. Really? Oh, that's yeah. cool. It was a, a Calvary First Missionary Baptist Church okay. in Fresno. And, uh, but anyway, I'm doing all this stuff, and I'm just at this critical point in my life. I just went into that room, and as soon as I got in the door, I went down to my knees, and then I went down to my face. And I was on my face and literally prone, laying out there before the Lord and praying and crying out to God in prayer. Very personal thing. I don't, I don't know that I've ever shared this before. Right. But uh, the door opened, and in walks my son, my oldest son, who was about probably six at the time, six years old. And he says, Daddy, what are you doing? And I said, I'm praying. He said, can I pray with you? Wow. Oh, wow. And I said, yes, you can. That would have melted me. And you know that he got down just like I was, prone on the floor, and started praying beautiful words. Out of the mouth of babe. Before the Lord. Well, what my thought is, you know, we can either be um, a, a helper to people through, we don't do it for ourselves. Yes. This is not for ourselves. Absolutely. And uh, there's a verse in the Bible, that everything I, that you said uh -huh. brings up a multitude of verses yeah. in you as well. Of course. And that's what, yeah. that's what iron is sharpening that's iron. That's right. Yeah. But, uh, there's a verse in the Bible uh, from the uh, book of, uh, I think it's Zechariah or Malachi, and uh, where it talks about, as falls the cedar, so falls the fir tree. Because the cedar is this big tree. It, it's what it's describing is that the cedars typically were large. Mm -hmm. And underneath were these fir trees. And it said, howl, you fir trees, for the, ce the cedar, the great cedar has fallen. And when a cedar falls, it takes out everything. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are a cedar to somebody in our lives. That's right. All of us are a cedar to someone, mm -hmm. whether it's our own children, our grandchildren, our wife, our husband, our brothers, our sisters, our mom or dad, right. our grandmother, our grandpa, whatever it is, the situation is, or even just a friend. Yeah. A friend that looks up to us for some reason. Mm. And uh, we are a cedar to somebody. We can either strengthen them, we can either provide them shelter and protection, mm -hmm. or fall upon them and take them out mm. when we commit sin and fall. Mm -hmm. But my thought went straight to that, you know, right. when I lay there prostrate, straight before the Lord, yeah. prostrate, prone, crying out to God and my son mm -hmm. beside me. Wow, right. You were crying shadowing out to God. him. Yeah, you were shadowing him. <laughs> The awesome feeling yeah. your children. Yeah, uh, that's powerful. Would God, my, my children goodness. and my grandchildren would my praise goodness. the Lord in the same way that little boy Ooh. did. My goodness. This is, this is, you know, I, I've been saying this every week for the past, I don't know how, how many months or whatsoever, uh, but every time we, we start doing fire starters, I notice that there, there's something, a bigger fire building up online. Or, you know, just right here in general. I feel the pr strong presence of the Lord right now. Peace going on. And, you know, I don't know, I don't know uh, if we have any comments online right now. No. Uh, but we'll all probably, when we do, uh, we have, I know we usually have uh, some people that really love 
uh, listening to the specific messages like this, going, talking about David going dan dancing and having that joy. That's mm -hmm. what I feel right now. Mm -hmm. I feel the joy. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And fellowshipping with you, getting to, you know, the, the way we, this, this is all Holy Spirit right here. Yes, it is. You know, <laughs> I, I usually don't talk as much. Um, uh, Ron isn't usually as quiet, so, <laughs> you, you know, that's how I know this is all I'm idling, spirit. brother, believe me, I'm idling. <laughs> <laughs> He's wanting to chime in, <laughs> gentlemen, you start your engines. Word <laughs> you know. No, sometimes the Lord says, be still, no, I'm God, right? Absolutely. This Absolutely. Yeah. 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 That's, it's not, there's not always a time to speak. Sometimes mm -hmm. there's a time to listen and, and sometimes to um, uh, soak up. Right. What the Lord yeah, reflecting. Uh, offers to us, yeah. reflect on. Yeah, it. I'm reflecting a lot of yeah. things mm -hmm. here. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm being fed, and, and yeah. the Lord has given me things. You Absolutely. know, but it's yeah. not like um, right. it's not welling up so powerful <laughs> that I got to just you know like bomb it and throw it out. You know? Yeah, right. So, you know so. what? That's an important uh, thing that you just said there. I'm being fed. You're you're a pastor. You're a leader. You're a uh, you're a person who is involved in the community. Like I said, I see you in front of the board of supervisors praying, and I'm and I know you're praying for me. Absolutely. And I and I and I feel good about that. Mm -hmm. But even if even a pastor needs to be fed, a leader, a right. spiritual leader needs to be fed. If mm -hmm. we're not That's feeding, right. we're, if we're not getting fed. Yeah. We need to find that source of. As you said earlier, you know, you put yourself up there, and when you look at other people, you remember that if it weren't for the grace of God, you wouldn't be where you are. Right. Mm -hmm. And you don't look at yourself as being greater than no. those that you're serving. And that's the same thing for a pastor. If we ever think we are above other people because we're a pastor, we are in so much trouble. Reality check. Yeah, we yeah. are in so much trouble. Yeah. And so uh, I'm, I'm heed, lest I'm, we fall. Yeah, and I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm before you, and I'm being fed because of who you are and yes. what your experiences are and what you share yeah. is 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 just ministering to me. Yeah. Wow, that's and great. so. And so do I not only have 15 or 20 more new messages because of what I've heard from you, <laughs> but, yeah. but I'm also being able to soak it in to the point to where revelation is beginning to change some of the things that I have forgotten about my own self. Right? Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's, you know, the reflection of the Lord is a reflection that we get from others. And like you said, iron sharpening iron. But at the same time, the growth that comes from the revelation that we receive is what causes us to conform more to the image of Jesus Christ because we are all of the same spirit. That's right. right. See, right. The, the war of the flesh and the spirit has always been the issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and whether you choose to stay in the battle um, with the spirit or whether you give up or whether you just even deny that it's even there, it will depend on how the glory of the Lord will work out of a person's life. Right. The fire of God works in the passion because the passion comes from the understanding and the belief that we are so loved no matter what we do or who we are. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so that passion gives us uh, the mobility to go out and do what we do. Right. Yeah. Um, awesome. I want more of your passion because <laughs> I'm, I'm not doing yeah. 120 hours right now. You know what I mean? There's more life to live. Right. I'm understanding that today, you know, that well, I'm, I'm settling for less. Yeah. Well, sometimes and, we do that. Yeah, you know, well, and it's okay. And, yeah, it's and it okay. is okay. It's yeah. okay. Well, we need to understand that uh, in life, you know, what, some of the things that God points out to us is that uh, we're being hunted. That's right. And uh, one, he, one thing he, he uh, reminded us, he told Peter, he said, Peter, uh, Satan has desired you. Yeah. That he might sift you out like wheat. That's In right. other words, um, I remember my grandmother had a flour sifter. Yeah, you yeah. Remember the that? old one? The old one, and you crank <laughs> on it, and it would go back and forth, and it would, uh, it would spin around, and it would just kind of crush the flour up inside there so that it came out smooth finer yeah yeah finer yeah but uh i thought i think of that every time i think of that verse where he says i i want to sift you like wheat he wants to mash you and pound you into powder mm. and that's what god was uh, christ was telling peter but i have prayed for you that your faith fail you not yes 
And uh, he reminds us as we go to, uh, when we look at Peter, 1 Peter, I think it's 5 and 8, be sober, be vigilant mm-hmm. for your adversary. Be sober. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That means get serious here, boy. That's right. That's right. Be vigilant. Be yeah. watchful. Uh, be, uh, have your wits about you. Yes. Because your adversary, That's right. the devil, as a roaring lion, is walking about seeking whom he may devour. That's right. right. That's mm-hmm. right. He wants to, I think of a lion. When I, when I uh, went to South Africa, I was there three different times on safari. Wow. And uh, we were there, and this, uh, this water buck was attacked by uh, a group of female lions. But they weren't able to take him down. He was kicking them, and he had horns, and he was goring them. And all of a sudden now, the bush sprung 600 pounds of muscle and claw and teeth. This male lion charges out of the bush with a huge mane flowing in the wind. I, I could just see that he was, his eyes were fixed. Yeah. His eyes were fixed on the prey. And he went straight for the throat, and he grabbed that water buck by the throat and spun it down, and it didn't stand a chance. Yeah. And his claws were up around it, and, it, and then it just shredded that thing within minutes. They all shredded it. It was, there, it was there one minute breathing, and the next minute shredded. And that's what the devil wants to do to us. That's right. As Christians, he want, and he's working at it over time these days because we, oh, see, man. we see the results yeah. on the Internet. We yeah. see the results in Las Vegas, yeah. the shooting that happened. We see the results in daily living That's right. where people are angry and they're, mm-hmm. they're bashing and they're, they're right. calling names Hacking and each other. criticizing yeah. Yeah. Uh, what is good is now bad and what is bad is good. And the Bible says it's going to happen yeah. in the last days. That's right. Well. And um, so he is working overtime to destroy the lives of people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're being hunted. And, but the good news is, is that we also, uh, God is pursuing us also. Right. That's right. That's right. God is pursuing us also, yeah. and he's there. He, and like he, uh, he told Peter, I pray for you that your faith fail you not. But remember that when you're being hunted, God is also there. That's right. And, and you are under his protection as long as you stay within right. his rules. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I think of a, an example that Dr. Dobson, James Dobson, mm-hmm. gave in a book that he wrote. Rules are funny. They're like... Uh, like a, a, we look at them sometimes as like they're a cage. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But you know, cage has two-way protection, doesn't it? Sure does. If you're a hamster in a cage, and this hamster was in a cage, he's watching this hamster, and he was trying to get out of the cage, and it found a weakness in the cage, and it's working its way out of the cage, and down below is Mr. Cat. Yeah, yeah. waiting, <laughs> waiting, just waiting for him to get out of the cage. In this moment, the cat was the devil. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and as long as that hamster stayed in the cage, the cat didn't get it. That's right. But the minute he gets out of that cage, he's a he's fair game. He he's a hamster shish kebab. That's right, man. He's done. And so uh, God has rules hmm. for a reason. Yeah. And those rules are laid out in his word. Yeah. And they're there not to keep us from having fun, but yeah. to protect us from That's ourselves. That's right. Absolutely. And from our adversary, the devil, who Absolutely. walks about as a roaring lion. Seeking whom he can render into yeah, pieces. That's right. See, yeah. and, the, and the confusion comes in that, especially as a, either a young believer or a person that doesn't believe at all, right. they look at it that way still because our minds have been trained to look at things like mm-hmm. the world looks like. Mm-hmm. It takes the process of conforming to Christ by doing such things as staying in the Word of God, worshiping the Lord, praying mm-hmm. and doing the things in our life repetitiously yeah. that allow us to start to think like Christ, yeah. to start to think like God, and understand that He is good. Yeah. His ways are good. The evil, destructive things that happen on the earth, absolutely, whether it's fires, whether it's tornadoes, whether it's shootings, whether it's just a simple 
negative, ugly word like you're ugly, all those yeah. things are worldly and all those mm -hmm. things are meant for destruction. Mm -hmm. John 10.10 10 so plainly divides who God is and who Satan is. That's right. The thief, Satan, comes to steal. He wants to steal the word of God. He wants to steal the goodness of God. He wants to steal the power of God. And if you're a Christian believer and you have no power and authority in your life, it's because the enemy is keeping you from believing the truth that you are anointed by the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will show you all things, teach you all things, will allow you to walk like Jesus Christ walked on the earth. If Satan, you know, when you become a believer, Satan wants to keep you from knowing that. Yeah. He doesn't want you to have power. Yeah. He wants you to be a woe is me. I'm just a sinner. I'm never going to go anywhere. I'm never going to do anything. Please come quick, Jesus, because I can't take it here no more. <laughs> and God is telling you, rise up, son. Come on. Rise up, daughter. Yes. I put authority in you. I put power in you in the name of Jesus Christ. My blood is simmering hot right now. And I want you to walk in this earth and defeat yes. negative, defeat ugly, defeat Satan, defeat the things that are trying to take over yes. and destroy my people. Keep, keep, keep so on. if you're on the wrong side today, if you have no understanding about the difference between who Satan is, the one that steals, kills, and destroys, and you want to come on to Jesus' side, the one that wants to give you life, and life abundance, you've got to make that call. Mm -hmm. You have to make that decision in your heart that you are tired of this world, even all the good things that it has. You're tired of that lifestyle. You're tired of not being able to live a fruitful life in you with the joy of the Lord like David, worshiping and praising. And that's what you want. And if that's what you want, then you need to, in this moment, surrender your life to Jesus okay. Christ. Believe that God sent him to this earth mm -hmm. in a fleshly man so that he could carry the powerful human sinless blood of God and shed it on that cross to pay for your sin mm -hmm. and to pay for your ticket to eternal life with Jesus Christ, God the Father, yes. and the Holy Spirit, which is yes. what we call heaven. If you don't do that, you have already defaulted to live with the thief now and eternally. So you're being called right now by the power of God mm -hmm. to make that change. If you've already made that change and you haven't grown into becoming the image of Jesus yes. Christ, then God is speaking to you. He's sending fire from heaven into your life because he wants you to become who he's called you to be in Jesus Christ. Yes. Receive that today, yes. accept that today, believe that today, and you'll be changed in this moment. That's right. You will become that new creation in this moment. Thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. I knew I was going to yeah. say something to you later. <laughs> you know, he caught fire there for that. <laughs> so much for, for the quiet man, right? <laughs> you know, Ron, great. <laughs> earlier you were talking about the war against the flesh. And ever since there, ever since then, I got the name uh, Mark. Mark, from, from that point on when he spoke those exact words, war against flesh from the point on now, even probably even after, after I mention this, this is for you. You have, uh, you have a, uh, a issue with going on that, that, that's going against your flesh. The enemy keeps on trying to deceive you into uh, turning your ways, but I want to encourage you to get into the Word. Our flesh is weak, but our spirit is strong. You continue to get in the Word, that will build up your spirit. When you build up your spirit, then you end up, you end up changing, changing the, uh, the outcome of your, your thinking, renewing your mind. The Lord will do it. Just receive this Word. Yeah, in yeah well, we have, to, we have to ultimately grow the spiritual man inside of us to become stronger than the flesh. Yeah. No one's going to defeat their flesh on their own. You're mm -hmm. going to surrender to sin. You're going to surrender to temptation. You're going to constantly be defeated. And coming into the kingdom of God is just the beginning of making that change, you know. And, and so many, you know, maybe aren't told that or understand that in the beginning. Right. This is a process of how many years? Uh, this, I've been a uh, born-again child of God for fi over 50 years. 50 years? 50 yeah. years. So if you've just become a new believer, 
and what you're hearing, you're, you're liking because you're understanding that, man, you, there's just wars going on around you all the time. Maybe yeah. you're so physically ill right now, you don't even think you can praise the Lord. I've been there. Oh, and I promise you, me, that, I have too. And you've uh, been yeah. there too, praise and, God. And you know what? We, we, it's a continual battle. Yeah. It's not something that, oh, I'm 60 years old now, that's going to change. Yeah. Uh, you know, as long as we live in this world and uh, the prince of the power of the air, where where's the air? It's all around us, right? That's right. And Satan is, uh, the devil is noted in the word as the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that works in the children of disobedience. That's right. That's right. That's right. And, you know, uh, our, we are all our own worst enemies. <laughs> Come on. I was thinking about that <laughs> when so you were true. talking. And uh, uh, the Bible says that every man, when he is tempted, is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Yeah. Uh, it, it, you know, the devil doesn't have omniscience. Satan does not, he's not like God. God is omniscient. You know what omniscience is mean? Mm-hmm. It means he knows everything. He's all knowing. Yeah, he right. knows what's going to happen, what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. What's all, he, he's also aware of all that's already happened. Yeah, yeah. So God is all knowing. He's all knowing about everything that's going on around us. But the devil doesn't know everything. And here's what he doesn't know about you. He doesn't know what you don't tell him. That's right. And he's looking for a way. As I said, he's a roaring lion. He's yeah. looking to make you his prey. But in the quickest way you'll make him, uh, him your, uh, the person that's ready to devour you, the quickest way you'll become his prey is by doing that yourself and by letting him know your weakness. That's right. Because he's going to test your weaknesses. And every man, when he's tempted, is drawn away of his own lust. That's right. And enticed. That's right. And when lust is conceived, it brings forth sin. You know, it's not a sin to be tempted. That's right. Being tempted is something that happens to everybody. Mm-hmm. But when we give way to temptation, when we say, okay, I'm giving in to that, that's when it becomes sin. That's right. And when we, we're drawn away of that lust and enticed, so that's an easy way to become Satan's prey. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 you know, David would have been much better off as, as a king of Israel if he had not... He looked. He, he couldn't help what he saw because he had eyes, right? I mean, you'd have to pluck your yeah. eyes out to not see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so... He looked and saw. Well, that wasn't a sin, looking and seeing. seeing. And what he saw was a naked woman. Looking and seeing a naked woman was not a sin. That's right. But he looked too long mm-hmm. at, the, at the woman. He liked what he saw. He began to covet it and desire That's it. That's right. And it's our desires that get us into trouble. Right. If, uh, you know, there's so many ways our desire gets us into trouble. Oh, my goodness. Uh, if any man desires wealth, yeah, the love of, it's the love of money that's that, right. that is the root of all evil. That's right. Mm-hmm. Not, it's not money that's mm-hmm. the root of all evil. Mm-hmm. It's the love of it. It's, the, it's to desire something so much that you're willing to go beyond what you should do mm-hmm. to, to achieve that thing. And David did that with Bathsheba. That's right. He went beyond... Uh, just looking and went into covetousness. That's right. And that's what we do when we commit and sin. That's right. And we become the prey. We become Satan's prey at that mm-hmm. point. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. Because we deceive ourselves. See? Yep. We take the thought. Jesus said, "Don't take the thought saying." Because once we begin to take the thought and we dwell on it, now we're scheming. Right. Now we're figuring out. David had the power to say, "Hey, bring that woman up to me," you know. And uh, from that point, it was a done deal. He'd already surrendered to the temptation and the lust of his flesh right. and the lust of his eyes. And, the, and, and so he became so prideful. True. And whenever we become prideful and lusting and coveting things, what happens is, is we put that before God. Oh yeah. That's why God said, don't put no other gods before oh, yeah. me. It wasn't because if you're over there worshiping a pillar and a stone or whatever, I mean, that's foolish to do that. But if you're doing that, okay. But don't put that thing before me. Right. So when we put a car, a house, a woman, a man, a whatever, an animal, whatever. when we put something else, so much passion and lust into yeah. that, we're actually making an idol out of that right. before God. That becomes our God, 
and we forget about the one true real God, even though He may consciously be there. We may be going to church on Sunday. We're hearing messages, and yeah, it sounds good, but it's not really changing us. It's not really it's impacting not us to make change. <laughs> That's right. The Word of God is action. The yeah. faith is action. Love is action. Everything is action. So when the Word comes in, it's supposed to create new action inside of us so that we will act it out in the natural. That's right. If the Word is coming, but there's things in our heart, there's things in our mind and our soul that we're coveting, that we're putting before God, well, the Word comes and those things get up in front of it and it bounces off and goes somewhere else. We want the Word to come into our heart. We want the Word to come into our eyes and our ear gates so that it will flood through the mind and the soul and wash down into the heart and cleanse us under righteousness to where it becomes good. And it becomes motivation and it becomes action and passion for us to serve the Lord in everything that we do. Mm -hmm. If you're going to work today and you're going to work for money, you're going for the wrong reason. We're supposed to go to work and serve. The money will come. The money will follow us because we're serving the Lord in what we do. And I'm not saying that you have to distract and not focus on what you're doing on your job. Or not doing it, but if the only reason you're going to work is to get money, man, you are missing out on so much because serving the Lord and going to work to get money is where all the pleasure is. That's where the prosperity is because we get to serve people. Right. We get to serve our boss right. or so-called boss, whatever. But so, so, so the point of it is, is that whenever we take anything of this world and we make that the importance of why we are living, why we are moving, why we are breathing, it's the whole wrong motive and we're missing out on love, we're missing out oh, yeah. on mercy, yeah. we're missing out on grace and forgiveness, we're missing out on the provision of God in this thing. Yeah. And, and, and so our mindset has to change. The word has to come in because the devil is going to dangle his prosperity in front of us every way that he can, any way that he can. And when we surrender to that, then we deceive ourselves. And all those things you just had mentioned well, just you, fall right in line like dominoes. You quoted First John almost perfectly where it says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Yeah. All that Ooh, is in the world on. is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, pride of life. And these are not of the Father, but of the world. If you look at those three things he described, it, lust of the flesh... If it, if it feels good, yes, right. this is what the world says to you now. If it feels good, do it. Yeah. So if lust of the flesh, now the lust of the eyes. If it looks good, good. it must be good, and let's, let's get it. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, that's what Eve said to, to the uh, husband, and the husband said, uh, well, it's a tree that looks desired to it looks desirable and the fruit is good. So it looks good. <laughs> if it feels good or looks good, and then the last thing, he said, the pride of life, um, if it makes me look good. That's right. <laughs> Amen. If it makes me look good. Amen. If it That's does good, something brother. for me. If it serves me. If it's about me. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people that their whole life is about them. I mean, their whole existence That's right. is what makes me feel good. What That's makes right. me look good. What makes me, <laughs> me, 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 you know? Yeah. Um, and so... The, uh, those three things, he says, these are not of the Father. This is, you can quickly identify uh, what, what will lead you astray mm -hmm. when, you, when it falls into one of those three categories right there. And he said, these are not of the Father, but of the world. And he said, love, uh, love not those things. That's right. That's right. Yeah, it's okay to have everything. But you know, the, the point being is, is so, somebody told me this a long time ago from the Men of Promise um, Forgive me, I can't remember the brother's name, but uh, he, he said it like this. He said the, the, the idea for a Christian believer is, is to own nothing but possess everything. Mm. Should I say that again? It's okay to have things, but yeah. don't let them have you. That's right. You don't have to own anything. You don't have to don't own, own anything <laughs> yeah, on this earth. It doesn't matter if you own anything, but if you possess everything, you've got it all. There you go. That's good. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, and that always uh, stuck with me. And there is a pearl of great price. Yes, amen. And uh, <laughs> there, there was a man who had great riches, and he sold it all, gave it all mm -hmm. to purchase to have that pearl of great price. And that was an example of the uh, of, of Christ. You know, Christ is the pearl of great price. That's right. And uh, we give up everything. Yeah. We give it all up. That's to right. To have Him. That's right. Well, think about it. 
what if you had access to living in or moving in and out of or transferring 50 different houses, but yet your name wasn't on any mortgage? Hmm. Well, what's the big deal? Yeah. If you could go live in any one of those anytime you wanted to, would it matter if you owned it or not? Right. That's so it, the point is we don't really have to own anything. Yeah. <laughs> but you have to be able to possess it by being access to it. And God well, can it, access us to anything and everything on this earth. Absolutely. <laughs> Praise God. In reality, do we really own anything anyway? You know, I, I own a home. Uh, I, we say that. Yeah, we I say own that. a home. Yeah. Because uh, we like that. I live in it. But I pay taxes on it. <laughs> I have to maintenance it. Forever. And uh, so do I really own it? And if I don't pay those taxes, the government will come in and take it away from me. Yeah. You know? And yeah. if I don't do the maintenance on it, it's going to fall down right. around my ears. Yeah. So do I really own it? I mean, <laughs> uh, the Bible does say concerning this, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth That's where right. moth and rust does corrupt. And what it's saying is that uh, it's talking about the second law of thermodynamics, which is the law of entropy. That's mm. what it's relaying to us. And that, that law of entropy is one of God's laws, that all things are in a state of decay. This, the world is not here permanently. This world is not here permanently. It's in a state of decay. It's, and that's where we're growing older. Our houses are growing older, and they need to... Be repaired all the time. That's yeah. the business I'm in. I know that for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to repair them and keep them up. You have to change the carpets and the floors. That's you know right. that. Oh, right yeah. Right? Mine needs it right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're, the second law of thermo, thermodynamics cannot be escaped. And it started with Adam and Eve in the Garden right. of Eden. That's right. The, the law, the, this law of sin and death is also the second law of thermodynamics, the law of entropy. That's right. Because That's good. Uh, we, the the earth is decaying, and man is dying, and we started de- dying because for the wages of sin is death. Yes, and death came upon all men. Uh, death came by one man, Adam, and he he sinned, and so death passed upon all men. That's right. For that all have sinned. That's right. And so the law of entropy started working on us right then. Back in the Garden of Eden. Wait. And it's still working today. There's an appointment that we all have. Yeah, yeah. That's what, there's one we will never miss. That's right. Everybody's going to do it. It's coming. <laughs> that appointment's coming. Hey, Amen. <laughs> and it's an appointment with death. Yeah. And it's it an is appointment appointed. It's an appointment we don't make. It's an appointment that's already made. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, an appointed, it's appointed in a man wants to die. Yeah. And after death, the judgment. That's right. So are you, the question is, are you ready? Knowing that appointment's coming, are you ready for the appointment? Are you ready? Mm. You don't know when it's going to come. That's right. It could come to the young. That's okay. right. I'm Next sure those people that went to Las Vegas had no idea. How many of them? 58 or 60? I don't remember. It's the... 59 a total, 59 total deaths total, and 500, yeah. over 550 wounded. wounded. And those that were yeah. wounded didn't expect to be wounded. Yeah. Nobody either. expects yeah. to die. That's yeah. right. Like and, that. And, and yet it happens. There was, young, there was sure. a young man in our community there in Chowchilla. Got up one morning, headed to school on Highway 99. And uh, before he got to Merced College, he was on 99. Someone crossed the center divide, hit him head on. And they think that it was done on purpose. Whoa! Yeah, they think that they that they were committing suicide by other car. Oh my goodness! And uh, so you know, he ha- he had no idea though. No idea. Young man, right. with his life ahead of him, yeah. and yet it was cut short. He had an appointment that he didn't know he was going to keep that. He thought he was going to school, but he kept that appointment. That's right. With death. We all do that every day. We get every up. day. We get up. We think we yeah. got an appointment. That's right. I look yeah. at my calendar. Ron, this morning I looked at my calendar and I said, oh, I got to head for Ron's church over there, Believer's Church. Yeah. yeah. I got an appointment with Ron this yeah, morning. that's right. Well, you know, sometimes God has other plans, doesn't he? Yeah, that's yeah, right. Absolutely. That's right. And uh, his plans aren't always our, our plans. That's we right. need to make his plans our that's plans right. and be prepared for those appointments absolutely. in yeah. life. That applies to everything across the board. And uh, that's mostly what all today has been about, is about being ready. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. 
Are you ready today? Are you ready mm-hmm. in case something unexpected is going to happen in your life? Because if you're not ready, if you're not sure in your heart right now that you're ready, then what you need to do is you need to take this moment while the Holy Spirit is yes. convicting you in your heart. What's, what you're hearing is making so much sense to you, but it's also making you uneasy. You're feeling things going on to you right now that you're uneasy because you don't realize that you're not ready. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so the way you're going to get ready is you're going to understand this, that because of the fact that nobody is guaranteed the next breath, that you need your insurance plan. You need to be your life insurance to be upgraded right now. That's right. And what your life insurance is, is your eternal life. Not this life on this earth, the money that you're going to leave behind. But it's the guaranteed life insurance that Jesus Christ gives you by believing that he actually died for your sin. That's that right. he paid the price for you and that's the only way. Let me say it again. It's the only way that you are going to spend eternity with the one true God, Jehovah Yahweh. Our God, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, the one who paid the price for your life. Your understanding in this moment, the reason why you're nervous and your hands might be sweating, the reason why you're, you're fighting this judgment right now is because God is calling you into his kingdom. He's asking you to surrender yourself right now. And you do that by understanding that you can't pay your way to heaven. There's nothing you can do to get there. And because of that, you have to put your trust in Jesus Christ right now Mm -hmm. that what he did for you is good enough. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else you need to do but say, Jesus, I believe in you right now. I believe you're the Son of God. I believe that you paid the price for me so that I can ask you to forgive me right now of every sin that I've committed and every sin that I will do in the future. And I'm not talking about premeditated sin. You can't go there. I'm talking about the mistakes and the failures that you're going to have in obeying God. And because he will do that for you, that you'll receive him into your life in this moment, the Holy Spirit is coming into your life right now. When you do that, when you say that, and you're becoming a new creation in your spirit because the Holy Spirit is going to now live in you, and from this moment on, you belong to Jesus Christ. From this moment on, you belong to the God who created this universe and everything in it. And you can say that He is your Father. And you are His son and daughter. Praise God. And if you've done that, you're born again. You belong to Jesus. Welcome to the family of God, praise God. Behold what How manner of love the Father Absolutely. hath bestowed upon us that oh we my should be called the sons of God. You know, yeah. we, can, we can go on and on and on for about, you know, even maybe another hour. <laughs> or two or three. Yeah. Or, yeah. But uh, um, we we got we to gotta cut it short here um, a little bit soon because we're... We're getting more and more traffic around here, so <laughs> we got to get going here. So, okay. um, David, I just want to, you need to come back on again. Because <laughs> this was awesome. I'd be happy yeah. to. We can fellowship I can fit it into can. those 120 hours somewhere uh, around. I can there. tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thank you, Jesus. I, I just want to say uh, thank you guys for watching for, for today and just share this if it was really uh, blessed. Actually, just share it anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I, I don't really have much uh, last words. Well, let's end with this. Let's end with this. If you receive Jesus today, I want to encourage you to let us know. Um, And if you need some help finding a church to go to, if you need some help, if you're locally here in Madera, California, where we broadcast out of every week, uh, we want to get you hooked up. We want to get you connected because this is the first thing you don't want to do. You don't want to receive Jesus Christ and then do nothing else about it. Hmm. It's not about fire insurance. It's about conforming to the image of Jesus Christ. It's about learning to understand and know who your heavenly Father is, who you are in Him, and who He wants to be in you. And then you will walk in the authority of kingdom principles on the earth. So this is going to take some work. This is going to take some time. This is going to take commitment and dedication to the Lord Jesus Christ. And three of the ways that we know to do that is, is one, is get connected to a Bible teaching church that will teach you the truth and they will, they will recognize the gifts and the empowerment that God has for your life and grow you up in that. And two is, is that you develop a prayer life so you can build a relationship with God. And three is 
that you worship and you praise because of your thankfulness, because God has given you eternal life, and that God is going to impact and empower your life like you have never, ever experienced before. All the old things are going to go away because all the new things have come. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And God wants you to walk in His authority. He just doesn't want you to have fire insurance. He wants you to carry the fire inside of you so that you can sell insurance to others. <laughs> they can have life insurance. Yeah. Praise God. Go. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. So please, step forward in this. Don't just receive this today and not do anything else about it because you're going to get beat up by the devil. He's going to do everything he can do to convince you that this didn't happen and it wasn't true and that you are not a child of God and that you will have no authority and that he will continue to control your life. You're breaking out of this. Jesus is the one that gives life. He's the one that redeems, delivers, saves, heals, and restores. And he wants to empower you to be like him on the earth because you've been beat up by the devil too long. That's right. You've been living a lie too long. Mm -hmm. He breaks those chains of bondage and sets you free. For whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Praise God, I'm so free. <laughs> it's nice to freedom. be free, isn't it? Yes, it, it is. is. Thank it you, is. Jesus. Flying with freedom. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Blessed is yeah. the man unto whom God does not impute sin, having his transgressions removed from him. You know, brother, if we could take a surgical knife and cut you open right now, you would open up and the Bible would be right there. <laughs> you know, that's a great compliment, Ron. And my grandmother was uh, very, uh, she instructed children. Uh, she was a missionary. Wow. And uh, she just taught children uh, the Word of God. And my father made sure that I memorized a lot of Bible verses. And I did that with my children as well. And I Praise hope that God. when they... Uh, need that help it comes to them in the form of the of the, the word living the word of god which mm. abideth forever it's the word is the word is a lamp into our feet and a light to our path that's right it, it is food to our hungry soul yes man uh, the word of god like as a newborn babe desire the sincere milk of the word that you might grow by it. That's right. And get on to meat. Right? And then, yeah. then he says, don't linger on milk. That's right. When you've got teeth, start sinking it into the meat. That's right. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And, Love uh, the meat, man. Yeah. That's meat the greatest too. steak you'll ever chew on. Yes, it is. And it never goes away. You keep chewing and keep chewing and keep <laughs> chewing. You never eat it all up. It just gets always there. Absolutely. Eternal steak. Yeah. Right. <laughs> amen. Isn't it great? Yeah. yeah, God bless you. Well, thank you, brother. Thank, thank you, thank you for, for joining us here. today. I really enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, amen. I enjoyed being with you both. Absolutely. And here yeah. we are, from Fire Starters in the Morning, Madera, California, Believer's Church. Another another awesome day in the Lord. Praise yeah. God. I can't wait for next Thursday. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, next year we're, we're having changes. That yeah. is to be announced. That's Love nice. you guys.